All right, ladies and gentlemen, uh, during the show break, I just saw the news that uh, Rush Limbaugh the third uh, passed away. Uh, for those of you that, well, if you didn't hear this up till now, I'm sure you probably did. But it was Wednesday, Wednesday morning, uh, the 17th of February, uh, 70 years old. I've been listening. I started listening to Rush Limbaugh in the early 90s. Matter of fact, I I got his first book. See, I told you. No, no, the way things ought to be, in 1993, and and I read it, and it was. It, I actually read his book, uh, the way things ought to be, before I even listened to one of his radio shows, and I listened. Uh, Pretty much every day uh, when I was in in Florida, uh, yeah. The way things the way things ought to be by Rush Limbaugh was a New York Times bestseller. Came out in 1992. Uh, I read it in uh, oh, in 1993, and then then I read See I Told You So, which came out the next year, and I started listening to uh, to Rush. And I'll admit I hadn't list I haven't listened to him regularly lately. Uh, there's no bad reason for that or he's like oh i disagree with him or i changed my mind or whatever it just you know that's the way things are you, people get busy and and I'm, we're doing our thing and he's doing his thing but the the facts that he pointed out the historical relevance that he pointed out the fact that he was able to to point out uh evil for what it was, liberalism for what it was, to explain it and to challenge it. And that is why the left hated him. That's why they hate him today. Remember, uh, I don't know uh, how much reading you guys do, but if, you ever, if you've ever, if read Proverbs through and through, you will know that unlike modern college professors that don't, that view the world as various shades of gray, you know, what did we, last week we talked about the one college professors like these these right wing Trump supporters. They're the kind of people that view the world from the prism of good and bad of right and wrong. Yeah, that's because that's the way the world is. There is righteousness and there is evil. There is good and there is bad. There is right and there is wrong. And when you are hiding in the shadows, when your methods and your your decisions are unrighteous and evil you don't like it when people come along and point that out and you say how dare you how dare you come along and question our reality how dare you come along and question our methods and that's what limbaugh did he came along and he publicly he said 30 plus years ago that there is a silent majority in America. There is a majority of Americans who believe that this country is the greatest country ever founded, who believe in the rule of law, who believe in God, who believe in right and wrong, and they have no voice, or at least they didn't have a big voice. And he came along and he gave them that voice. He was the voice for the millions and millions of Americans who believe that this country was founded the right way, that it wasn't founded on hatred and slavery, that was founded on the belief that individual people could be the best that they possibly could be, not because of a government or a state program, but because they had the freedom and the liberty to do it. They had the freedom to succeed, and they also had the freedom to fail and start over again. One of the greatest lessons that I ever learned from Rush Limbaugh was that it's okay to be fired. Sometimes being fired from a job is the best thing that ever happened to you. Don't allow other people's opinions of you to crush you or to hold you down. That is something I learned from Rush Limbaugh. Rush Limbaugh was very honest with his audience. And he said, hey, look, before I got this job, I was like, oh, you're so lucky. You are so lucky. Luck had nothing to do with it. Perseverance had everything to do with it. Rush Limbaugh was fired 
from numerous radio host jobs. He was fired. And he said they told him nobody wants to hear that. They don't want to hear that, and they don't want to hear you, and you're fired. Can you imagine if he would have taken that to heart? If in 1972 or 73 or 76, he would have like, man, that this boss doesn't like what I have to say and thinks I'm stupid and, and no one ever is going to want to hear this, so I should just give up. But he didn't give up. He didn't allow being told no or being fired or being, you know, people like, they don't want to hear that. People don't want to hear it. He was told when he went to New York, you're making the biggest mistake of your life. When he launched his national show, people who, who he knew, you know, they're like, hey, you, you had a good thing going. You had a good, good show in California. You know, this is back before California was totally down the toilet. Just why are you doing this? Because this is never going to work. The experts, all of the experts in radio and broadcasting and media said to Rush Limbaugh when he went to New York to be on an AM radio station, you are the, you're a moron. You're a fool. This is never going to work. No one wants to hear it. AM radio is dead. That's the great thing about success. What's the great thing about success, Jared? Or what is the greatest revenge? Uh, we talked being, about being about successful. Success is the greatest revenge. Yeah. Success, and and they said, uh, "You're okay, whatever, do what you want, but you're gonna fail. You're you're crazy." Did you ever get the chance to meet Rush Limbaugh? No, I never did. I wish that that was one of the things that I wished I could have done. Oh. Uh, Rush, are you young people who weren't even paying attention or even alive in the 90s or 80s? Don't know. But he took a huge career risk. And he said, no, I believe in myself. I believe in my message. I believe that I, in what I'm doing. Even though you don't. Even though station managers and producers and all of the experts, all the experts said, what are you doing? AM radio is dead. It is a dead medium. You might as well go make eight track tapes. What are you doing? And he said, no, I believe in myself and what I can do. And they're like, oh, that makes you arrogant. If you believe in yourself, if you believe that your ideas are correct and that you will succeed, you're arrogant. That's and all the C students jump out of the woodwork. And they're like, who do you, who are you to believe in yourself? You should do what we say. Rush Limbaugh single-handedly resurrected AM radio in a time when everyone in the business said, this is over. It's, I mean, it's there. NPR uses it. But, you know, eight college radio stations use it, but that's it. It's dead. He turned a dead medium into, well, he resurrected it. And he did that through his own faith in himself and his God and his courage. Rush Limbaugh used to say, talent on loan from God. Now, do you boys understand what he really meant by that? Um, maybe. That he had been blessed by God. Uh-huh. He was actually acknowledging God. When he said, Rush Limbaugh with talent on loan from God, he was saying that it's not me. He was saying, this is a talent. I just read this morning, you know what's ironic? I just read in Matthew the, the parable of the talents. Mm -hmm. And liberals hated him for that statement. Oh, it drove them crazy. Why did it drive them crazy? Because they're like, oh, he's arrogant. He's saying that God gave him this talent. Now, to a Christian, you're like, yeah. 
that's where it came from. There's no disputing that. But to a non-believer, to, to, the, to the left, the rabid left, it just, they hated it. Rush Limbaugh perfected the art of demonstrating absurdity by being absurd. I could go on probably for an hour, uh, but I won't. Uh, for those of you that were touched by his words, yeah, later on in life, he, he wrote dozens, I think dozens of children's books to help young people understand uh, the history of the United States of America in a way that they could easily digest it and that was not politically correct and that had, hadn't been run through the filter uh, of modern liberalism. Oh. The closest I ever came to fame with Rush Limbaugh is I wore one of the ties from the Limbaugh collection. <laughs> That's funny. Uh, but he he will be missed. He did his job. He used the talent. And uh, go ahead and play the opener. 